the lush evergreen forest across the Western Ghats in the Shimoga district of Mysore state is famous for its enchanting beauty. Beauty that has inspired many an artist and many a poet. Here the river Sharavati plunges down the mountainside with a dizzy rapture, unfolding a glorious spectacle. It is said, once here came a man who on beholding this majestic scene exclaimed, what a waste. An odd comment indeed, but the man who made it was no eccentric. This man was contemplating the invisible power hidden in these mighty torrents. He saw in the falls visions of a myriad canals emerging from a reservoir. Visions of hydroelectric power which could turn the giant wheels of industry. This man was an engineer. He was a great engineer. He was Dr. Vishveshwaraya. Nestling at the foot of the Nandi Hills in the Chikpalapur Taluk of Mysore state is a little village, Mudenahali. Here, a hundred years ago, in 1861, Moksha Gundam Vishveshwaraya was born. Vishveshwaraya came of a poor family. His mother had to struggle hard to get him educated. It was she who brought him to nearby Chikbalapur for his schooling. From Chikbalapur, young Visheshwaraya migrated to Bangalore for his high school and college education. At the Central College, Principal Waters was proud of this brilliant student. A merit scholarship enabled Visheshwaraya to further his studies at Pune. He came to the College of Engineering, known in those days as the College of Science. Here, under the guidance and care of Principal Theodore Cook, he excelled in his studies and graduated with top honours at the young age of 23. Vishveshwaraya got the coveted job that was guaranteed every year to the candidate who topped the list of engineering graduates of the Bombay University. In March 1884, he started his engineering career in the holy city of Nasik on the banks of the river Godavari. Starting as an assistant engineer at Nasik, he rose to the rank of sanitary engineer to the government of Bombay. Many and distinguished were the services he rendered during this period. One of his lasting contributions to the state was the block system of irrigation, which he developed in the Nira Canal area of the Pune district. The object of the system was to distribute the benefits of irrigation over a large number of villages. His passion for statistics and for the intelligent use of these facts and figures were evident in the way he worked out the scheme. One of his engineering achievements was connected with the lake Fife at Kharakvasla. The storage of this lake was insufficient to meet the needs of the Mutha Canal, which supplied water to Pune. The reservoir overflowed every year above the surplus weir. The problem was to increase the storage capacity without raising the dam. Vishveshwaraya had the answer. He devised a system of automatic gates which did the trick. These gates have stood the test of time and have been copied in other places too. He took out a patent for the gates, but he refused to ask for or accept any royalty from the government. He always believed in work properly blended with recreation. The result was the Deccan Club, which flourishes to this day. In this good work, he had the blessings and cooperation of such eminent personalities as Mahadev Govind Ranade and Gopal Krishna Gokhale. The year 1909 brought Vishveshwaraya to Hyderabad. The Nizam's government secured his services for an important assignment. On the 28th of September 1908, the river Musi, which passes through the city of Hyderabad, was in floods and ravaged the city. In one area alone, known as Kolsavari, more than 2,000 people were drowned or washed away. Hundreds of buildings were swept away. The state government wanted Vishveshwaraya to examine the damage done and to suggest measures to prevent a recurrence of such a catastrophe. After making a survey, he recommended the construction of two reservoir dams above the city. 
one across the river Musi and the other across its tributary, the Isi. Vishveshwaraya will be remembered with gratitude by the people of Hyderabad as long as Usman Sagar and Himayat Sagar reservoirs are remembered. Vishveshwaraya also prepared a scheme for a modern system of drainage for Hyderabad city. It's a tribute to his foresight that the drainage disposal machinery which he got installed meets the needs of the city even today when its population has increased threefold. Vishwishwaraya also drew up plans for the improvement of the capital city of Hyderabad. His prophecy that when the improvements were carried out, Hyderabad would be able to hold her head high among her sister cities in India has come true today. In the same year 1909, he received a call from the land of his birth, Mysore. The Maharaja of Mysore offered Vishweshwaraya the job of chief engineer of the state. One of his greatest achievements as chief engineer was the planning and construction of Krishna Raj Sagar Dam across the river Kaveri. Completed in the year 1912, it was the largest reservoir ever built in India up to that time. If one can only place oneself in that epoch, one can judge what a colossal achievement it was in the context of the times. The estimated cost of the project was over 23 million rupees. Such a large amount the state had never spent before on any single project. Referring to this multi-purpose dam, Gandhiji once said, Krishna Raj Sagar alone, one of the largest of its kind in the world, would perpetuate the name of Sir Vishveshwaraya. The main irrigation canal named after Vishveshwaraya passes through a varied landscape, coursing through an artificial tunnel nearly two miles long, an engineering feat for that time. The canal has brought prosperity to land which was once barren. It has led to the extensive cultivation of sugarcane, which has made possible a flourishing sugar industry in the state. The sugar factory in Mandya is one of the largest of that class of factories in India. Mandya, which was once a sleepy, undeveloped village, is today a prosperous town, the headquarters of a prosperous district of the same name. Krishna Raj Sagar has thus brought immense prosperity in its wake. It has almost changed the face of Mysore. The Brindavan gardens below the dam have added enchantment to utility. An enlightened and appreciative Maharaja elevated Vishveshwaraya to the position of the Diwan of the state in 1912. Whether as engineer or Diwan, Vishveshwaraya's one aim was to develop the state to enable the people to work well, earn well and live well. The University of Mysore, the first university in any Indian state, came into being in 1916 thanks to Vishveshwaraya's persistent endeavours. He also founded the Kannada Literary Academy. Vishveshwaraya always felt that industries were the mainstay of the progress and the prosperity of a nation. The sandal oil factory was but one of the many industries introduced by him. Schemes for a host of other industries like soap, metalworks, chrome tanning and sericulture were developed through the Economic Conference, a planning commission for the state which Vishveshwaraya formulated. His diwanship in the state was marked by a single-minded devotion to the cause of the progress of Mysore state. 
Vishveshwaraya was connected with the Tata Iron and Steel Company for a number of years. It was perhaps this association that turned his thoughts to the exploitation of iron ore available in the state. With his characteristic drive and energy, he soon set up the Madravati Iron and Steel Works. After Vishveshwaraya retired from the office of Divan, the Iron and Steel Works was in a bad state. The world price of iron had fallen. Experts advised the closing down of the enterprise. It was against this background that Vishweshwaraya was persuaded in 1923 to take over as chairman of the board of directors. He set about the task of rehabilitating the works with his usual zeal. Soon Badravati iron was selling in the USA at competitive rates. To this day, Badravati occupies an important place in the industrial map of the country. The remuneration he earned as chairman of the Iron and Steel Works for over six years, Vishweshwaraya turned over to the state government for the establishment of an occupational institute. Today, this institution is one of the premier polytechnics in the country, imparting instruction in technical subjects like wireless telegraphy, radio engineering and cinematography, to mention but a few. Vishweshwaraya's passion for advancing education at all levels knew no bounds. He was president of the court of the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore for a number of years and was responsible for adding the faculties of some branches of engineering to the institute. Even when he was past the biblical span of three score years and ten, what he sought was not a rest cure, but an action cure. He believed that rural industrialization was the only cure for some of the ills of our rural economy. He prepared a scheme for rural industrialization which the Mysore government accepted and implemented. Over the years, he gave practical schemes or advice for the water supply of many towns in India. He was also responsible for the water supply schemes of Goa, Hyderabad, Sindh and Aden. Vishweshwaraya worked incessantly, preparing plans and schemes for the development of the country. He published several books and pamphlets. Waking or sleeping, he had only one thought in his mind, nation building. Vishweshwaraya travelled abroad several times. Wherever he went, his one consuming desire was to bring back technical know-how for the development of his own motherland. gave his invaluable technical advice for the location of one of the colossal projects of recent times, the Ganga Bridge at Mokame in Bihar. He was past 90 when he undertook this work. His deep interest in the industrialization of the country led Vishweshwaraya to found the All India Manufacturers Organization in 1941. Its motto, Prosperity Through Industry. He wanted manufacturers in the country to develop initiative and build new industries with the help of modern methods of organization. As the founder president of the organization, Vishweshwaraya still keeps in close touch with its activities and gives the organization the benefit of his rich experience and wise counsel. A grateful nation has heaped honours on a man who has served the country in so many spheres. Knighthood, degrees, honoris causa, galore.
when the centenary of his alma mater, the Central College in Bangalore, was celebrated, he was honoured as the oldest and the greatest living alumnus. The highest honour that an Indian citizen could receive, the award of Bharat Ratna came to him. In the citation, he was hailed as the father of the idea of planned development in India. But all these honours sit lightly on Vishweshwaraya's shoulders. Unaffected by all these, he lives today in his Bangalore home without a trace of ostentation. His devoted old secretary still assists him in all his work. Curiously punctual in his habits, Vishweshwaraya keeps himself busy and active, receiving visitors, holding discussions with them, attending social functions. For he thinks with Ulysses, how dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in use, as though to breathe were life. The one motto of Vishweshwaraya throughout his life has been, work is worship. As this Karma Yogi enters his hundredth year, we cannot do better than invoke the benedictions of our sages of yore. May we for a hundred autumns see that lustrous eye God ordained arise before us. May we live a hundred autumns. May we hear for a hundred autumns. May we speak well for a hundred autumns. May we hold our head high for a hundred autumns. Yea, even beyond a hundred autumns. Oh, yes.